Hello. I thought what I'd do today is have a little bit of a go on the creation kit for Fallout 4, which has uh, just come out. Now, at the time I'm recording this, I've I've been using the creation kit for about an hour, so I don't really have uh, a whole lot of experience. So I thought I'd dive in and do something like really simple, something there uh, that's you know dead easy to do. I'm going to have a bit of a mess around with the NPCs, so. I'm going to open, this all works exactly the same as uh, as the last GEC did, so it should be simple enough uh, for people who are familiar with it to launch it up. Right, and we're in. You'll probably get a window with a whole bunch of warnings pop up, like I'm getting a lot of these, but I think you can just really just get away with closing it. Uh, so what we're going to do first is we're going to go to Actors Actor, and this populates our list of NPCs. So we will Actually, I'll save my plugin first. I should really do that always first. So we'll go. Call it just call it set an NPC like that. Uh, save the game. So we're going to create a new NPC. So it's this part is exactly the same as in the uh, previous GEC. So right click new, and we'll get the menu coming up here. Warnings, get rid of them. So we've got a nudie guy here whose head texture uh, doesn't match his body texture, but it just wouldn't be the GEC if that wasn't the case. So give him a unique ID, uh, so I'll call him, just call him Sedden NPC. Give him a full name, so this is how he'll appear when you when you see him. So let's call him Sedden4494, at a short name, this is what will appear like in subtitles and things when you're talking to him. Just Sedden. And we'll start off with nice basic traits. So again, most of these, it's it's all right to just kind of leave as it is. Like I want him to be a human, not any of these. He could be any of these many other things. He could be, you know, I don't suppose I want to make him a bloat fly or a blood bug or anything like that. So let's leave him a human. Skin, uh, I don't want any of that. Uh, so voice type is going to be the first thing we want to do. Um, let's go for if we go for male, even toned. That'll make him sound like Garrus out of Mass Effect. So we'll do that. And pretty much all this is, uh, all that's fine. And so we can go to stats and work on things like his health and how much XP you get when you kill him. So I'm going to leave at level 1 and hit PC level Molt. And then for XP value offset, I'm just going to put 10 in there. So 10 is the, you know, because if you leave it at 0, you won't get any XP at all for killing him. And you want to at least get some XP. And then all these will automatically change as the player levels up. So you don't really need to do anything here either. Uh, factions. Now we're going to add two different factions to him so that he'll do the dialogue. I'm just going to put him in workshop uh, dialogue faction and uh, farmer generic dialogue. So that way when you speak to him he'll say those insufferable lines like, you know, um, you know what I call a, a good day, one that ends about an empty stomach. Relationships. Now in this you can uh, set what relationship he is to other NPCs in the game and I don't know what the point of this is so I'm just going to go on past it. Again this you should really be familiar with this if you've made an NPC in previous Gex. Uh, aggression, aggressive so he'll attack people who are his enemies, his faction enemies. Confidence, I'll put him at foolhardy so that means he never flees but this is just like how likely he is to flee. Like cowardly always flee and then like gradually more brave until never flee. Assistance, uh, set him to only help allies because your allies are like your uh, your closest buds, and your uh, friends and allies, your friends, just like people who are you sort of close to. Morality, um, he doesn't like let's put any crime. No, he's not a fan of crime. AI packages, um, again, we're just gonna keep it really simple. So I'm just gonna add, just add one of the default packages. Default. I'm looking for default sandbox editor location. There we go. It's default sandbox editor location. So he'll just kind of wander around randomly. Now, inventory. What we can do here is we can select any sort of default outfit for him to wear in the game. So, you know, Institute Scientist SRB, and he just put he puts on the clothes like that. But, you know, these these are somewhat, you know, limited in customization, so we'll uh, put none for now so he goes back in the nude and get a hit OK. Just so he's get rid of all these warnings because uh, yeah, I'm just going to pretend they're not there. And we're going to want to look for uh, items outfit. 
and here all the default outfits show up. So we can right click new and we get this uh, menu come up. So I'm just going to create certain outfit here. And now when we go to items armor we can see all the available armors in the game and there's a lot of it. So I'm going to really really quickly throw some of it together. I can throw in suspenders and slacks, uh, a militia hat and some road goggles. Just throw any old three random things in, not thinking about it at all really. And I'm just going to filter for Seddon NPC. And we're, gonna, we're back in inventory. So now we can look for the outfit that we just made. Ah, fabulous. It's because it, ma it made me uh, don't do what I just did. Um, now it's gone messed up. There it is, set an outfit. There we go, now he's wearing it. Because when, when I it automatically selected uh, scavenger, uh, the leveled item of scavenger junk, and we don't really want that. So I've just thrown a whole load of random crap on him without really thinking about it. So he looks pretty... And we'll just leave sleep outfit. He doesn't need to change his clothes to sleep. That'd be weird. Now inventory, we're going to give him a weapon. So right click new and then object down here. I'm going to select pipe gun. So then this is just basically any old pipe gun. And he'll just... It will, the game will kind of create one uh, for him. So now we're going to skip along a little bit bit to character gen morphs. Now this, I found, I mean when I first launched Fallout 4 and had to create my character I found it overwhelming. So this is also very, like there's a whole heck of a lot of stuff we can choose from here. But we can uh, bung in some presets, like his mouth, we can do preset downturn 5, and we'll get a view his head here. Like that. And so we can change any of these full pursed view his head and we can see it's you know it's changing he looks he'll probably end up looking pretty gross to be honest but we can go and we can twiddle with I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time doing this twiddle with any of this stuff let's minimize the warnings this when I was there uh, testing out uh, these warnings did not appear with that much frequency so I don't know what that is up with that so you can just it's pretty self-explanatory this part really just fiddling with any of this and we can get a better look, click head and zoom in. Now if you're finding when you zoom in that it zooms in really really far and you, it's not very precise you can right click in this void and this menu will come up and you can lower your zoom speed here so I put it right down to 0 0.05 and you can lower your rotation speed and your pan speed and you can hit apply and it'll take a second or two and then you can hit close which also takes a second or two and then you can have uh, easier so you just click and move your mouse to rotate uh, press the middle mouse to move uh, around and scroll wheel to zoom in it's just exactly like the old gek and now character gen parts is a little more uh, interesting we can add anything basically grime face paint eyebrows face tattoos so let's add a bit of grime to him uh, mud and blood and now you'll see it hasn't changed but that is because it defaults to zero on the scale and so we can raise that up and you can see I'll just center him again mud and blood on my face his face and we can do the same, we can put some face paint on him uh, tribal and we'll have to do the same for that raise the fat up and it has appeared and we can put some bit of skin tint, I don't know what the point of that is actually skin tone, oh that's, I hope that's not going to be something horrible um, we can add a bit of damage to his face and uh, nose arch we can make that big center it on him again I can't really see, he's got too much stuff on now to see anything that I've added add a blemish, cheap blemishes, these probably won't show up because they're underneath the face paint you can't really see because it's underneath so many other layers of horrible horrible things and so we can change his hair as well so we go hair male 01 default and select any of these now I've put a hat on him so unless I choose like a particularly long hair you might not be able to see it change see now I'm bald and we can do facial hair as well which is much the same, select from the drop down menu just refresh and I've got a 
a bit of a moustache going on there. Something that is a little bit weird is the changing of the hair colour. Like if I put on a beard that's a little bit more sort of substantial, if I can find one. I prefer it if they were named differently, because like in the other Gex it was named something that gave you a hint of what it might look like. So when I change facial hair colour to say, uh, okay, that, like nothing happens except a little highlight has appeared on the back of his neck. But when you go in game, the hair colour has it has changed. Oh, I've accidentally scrolled loads. Let's put it on silver like that. And that is really a very quick run through of uh, of how to make your NPC. So I'm going to save now and we're going to place him somewhere in the world. So I'll load up the Commonwealth and have a little look. Um, oh, it really does squash him up, doesn't it? Uh, Abernathy Farm Exterior is probably the uh, the best bet, really. And that's where I've I've got my character stood waiting to load up and demonstrate in the game. Yeah, I get all the controls for camera movement are the same as in the uh, last Gex. I'm hold hold shift and rotate like that. Uh, space to pan, middle zoom in. It's pretty standard. So I'm gonna click and drag my NPC into the world like that. And he's got all the way over there. That's nice for us. Okay. There he is. So again, movement controls exactly the same. Z to raise him up. Right click, spin him around. Hit F and I drop him to the ground. And save that. So I've made a little NPC, put him in the world. I'm going to uh, dive into the game now and have a look at what he looks like. So I'm in game and before I start I just want to address something. This right here, absolute bullshit. Like I don't understand why they've uh, decided to gate off modded saves and why they've decided to disable achievements for it as well. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's never been a problem before and most mods aren't really going to affect achievements like my 7449 for NPC, unless he has some superpower I don't know about, is not going to affect mods. And uh, achievements, sorry. And even if he did help me get achievements easier, does it really matter? I mean, it's not a competition. You know, what I do with my game it does not affect what anybody else does with their game. You know, since Todd Howard goes on about how we want everyone to have their own custom experience, but apparently not. Apparently they're dead keen on getting off bloody mods. But anyway, yeah, uh, here's my NPC. Um, there's not very much for him to do, so he will just kind of meander. Uh, if I put him a bit closer to Abernathy Farm, he might have, like, used for furniture and stuff. But let's see what he's got to say for himself. You hear about that farm run by ghouls? Isn't that something? You know what I call a good day, one that ends without an empty. So I've just given him default dialogue for the moment, uh, so he doesn't like launch into anything in particular. And if I get out my gun and kill him, got a little bit of XP for it, a little bit of leveled XP. And he's got a suppressed hardened pipe sniper rifle and the relevant ammo for it. So just giving him pipe gun works fine to give a random, uh, a random leveled item. And I can even eat my own corpse. Wasn't that delicious? So yeah. That all seems to have worked uh, quite nicely, you know. I've not spent very much time with the creation kit, so I haven't quite got to grips with everything it has to offer. Like I said at the start, I've only been playing for, oh, using it for about an hour, so uh, I've really just been doing basic stuff, and I think that's probably what I'm going to do in terms of tutorials. I'm going to sort of start with the very basic stuff, like as I'm sort of picking stuff up, and then gradually move on to a B more complicated stuff like quests and proper scripting and things. Cause, I mean, it was a while uh, between me doing my my yeah you know, when I started modding and me doing my first ever get tutorial for free in New Vegas. So you know I don't know how long it's going to be before I'm doing like decent stuff on this. But I just thought you know I'll do something to start with. You know a little bit of a uh, have a little bit of a mess around of it, create something that was uh, basic. You know and uh, so hopefully this was at least useful for for starters. And yeah, uh, thank you for watching and goodbye.